What's up, YouTubers? Adam here. And uh, today I just want to talk to you a little bit about my CGM. Um, if you've seen my previous videos, you know I have a continuous glucose monitor that I wear regularly. And, you know, in addition to telling you when you're high and when you're low um, and the trends, I think one of the most important features or one of the things I like most about it is that you're able to get real-time data um, every five minutes and I think you know having that uh, continuous tracking can be a real source of motivation for people so you know for me it encourages me to exercise and eat, eat well because I can see the effects when I don't exercise or when I don't eat well. So today I just wanted to show you how I extract the data from uh, the Dexcom. Um, if you have a PC and you have a Dexcom, uh, it comes with a set of software you can download um, where you can see a bunch of reports and things, but if you were a Mac user for a long time, you weren't able to get the same reports. Um, but a, a fellow diabetic who is also a Mac user uh, named Brian Bosch created uh, a web app through Google Chrome uh, where you can download some of the data. So I'll link to him uh, below and I'll link to the URL if you're not familiar with it. So what I want to do here is just show you uh, what I do with the data because um, what Brian Bosch created is a really nice set of reports um, but in addition to the reports you can also download um, a file with every single blood sugar reading that you can customize yourself. So I want to show you what I do and show you how to do it if you're interested. Okay so I just opened up Excel and you can see here this is what uh, the web app will, if you download the data from this web app, um, the data you'll get. So you'll see the date and it, let's see right here, you can see the date and the time. Um, you can see your blood sugar number at that time and you can see whether the arrow is trending flat or up or down and 45 degrees or 90 degrees. Um, and so what I, what I did is I took that data and created a way to see um, your daily values. So um, this graph is a 24 hour time chart from midnight to midnight. Um, and then this is for January 1st, 2015. And you can see um, basically a, a plot of your blood sugar levels. Um, and it's color coded, so anything above a set limit of high, so for me I set that as 200, um, shows up as yellow and everything set as low, which I used 80 as my cutoff for low. Um, comes up as red and everything in between is green. And you can see, you can just sort of check off the different days um, and it'll show you your blood sugar. And in addition, I added a little a couple boxes here um, for your estimated A1C over the past 90 days of readings if you want. Um, for me, I don't have 90 days of readings, so this is just over the past three weeks or four weeks, um, as well as an average blood sugar of this day. So you can see, you know, on January 8th, it was 131, and then if I go to, let's say, January 11th, uh, it was 112. Um, and then the other thing that I created that might be of interest is um, a way for you to see, um, you know, to understand if your blood sugar is varying by whether or not you exercise, or maybe you can do it by um, whether or not you ate a certain food or had breakfast in the morning or any sort of binary yes, no for the day. Um, so for me, I chose, you know, on the days when I run, what is my average blood sugar and what would that correlate to an estimated A1C? And for the days that I don't run, what is my average blood sugar and what would that A1C look like? So as you can see, you know, for me, it looks like when I run, my blood sugar is about 20 points lower than when I don't run on average throughout the day. Um, so I think these sort of experiments are pretty interesting and you have all the data at your fingertips. So I just wanted to show you quickly how I do that. Go to download and download um, export CSV. And I'll just save it for now. I'll just save it to my desktop. Um, okay. And um, on my Mac, I actually have to rename the file. You might have to do this. 
So I can rename it that CSV. Um, add the extension so it'll be recognized in Microsoft. Okay, now I'm not a programmer or anything, and you don't have to be a programmer to be able to create the graphs I created, um, but there are just some tricks that I'll walk you through. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to change this column from just a text file, a general file, into um, text to columns. You'll see what I mean in a second. So um, highlight everything in A, and then you're gonna wanna go to data and text to columns. Um, you're gonna click delimited, and don't worry if you don't know what all this means, just follow along and it'll, it'll make sense. So click on delimited if that's not already clicked. You'll wanna um, uncheck tab and you'll check the space bar. And then um, the last thing you'll do is you'll make sure that the destination is highlighted. And for our purposes, we're gonna click on D1. So this will say D1, finish. And it basically repopulates everything here, but every time there's a space, it just moves it into a new column. Okay, now the next thing we're going to do is we're going to add a row. So you're gonna to wanna to highlight row one, and you're gonna to go to insert. You're gonna right click and then click insert. Uh, and the reason for that is we need to come up with headings so we don't forget what things are. So in column B, we're gonna say blood sugar. In column E, we're gonna say day. F, we're gonna say year. G, we're gonna say time. And D, we're gonna say month. Okay. Uh, the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna need to change the month. So for me, my data goes from December 31st all the way down to January 26th. So I have um, two different months. I have December and January. And we need to convert the letters into numbers. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna highlight all of D, press Command F, and then choose Replace. And so for me, I'm going to say find December, D-E-C, and replace with, and I'm going to put the number 12, and then I hit replace all. So 65 times, it replaced the month December with 12, and then I also have January, so I'm going to find Jan and replace it with 1. Okay, great. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to add a column, and this is going to say date, and you're going to say, um, equals date, parentheses, year, and you're gonna highlight the column, the, the cell for that, so year, month, and day. So if you're following along with me, it was F2, D2, E2, and that should come up with the, the, that date, and then you'll double click to drag that value down. Okay, and all that's doing is it's basically, instead of having the date written as a text file in Excel, it's, it recognizes it now as a, real, as, a date, as a date. Okay, the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna change the blood sugar values. Instead of just having one column of blood sugar, we're gonna have three columns of blood sugar. So we're gonna label column I, low BG. J, we're gonna say is normal BG. And K, we're gonna say is high BG. So in column I, the formula we're going to add is an if statement. So if B2 is less than whatever you want. So for me, a low blood sugar is anything 80 or below. So I'm going to say if B2 is less than 81, I want to report B2. And if not, I'm going to leave the cell blank. So to leave the cell blank, I just you put in two quotes. Okay? And so for example, this blood sugar was reading was 146. So for low BG, it shouldn't read anything because I didn't have a low blood sugar value. Then I'm going to drag this one down by double clicking. And you can see, you know, when I have a 78 here, it's a low blood sugar, so it'll populate in this. We're going to skip the normal BG for now. We're going to do input um, a high blood sugar reading. So the high blood sugar is going to say equals if B2 is greater than, and again, for me, 200 is high, so I'm going to say 199. Then you're going to input B2, and if not, you're going to put quotes. Okay. Now we're going to go to normal BG, and for normal BG, we're only going to input the data if the other two, low and high, are both blank. So we're going to say it's going to be an if and this, the low BG value equals quotes, and K2 equals quotes, then they're both 
blank, we're going to add B2. If not, we're just going to leave, leave it blank. Okay. So because I2 and K2 are both blank, J2 is now populated. Okay, the last thing we're going to do here is we're going to highlight um, both of these columns, normal and high BG, and we'll drag them down. So you should see for every one, every blood glucose value, there's only one column populated here, low normal. So you can see that. 